Hello, Club Culture family. If you're on YouTube, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell. And if you're on your favorite streaming platform, thank you for tuning in and make sure you leave us a rating. This is episode 87. I have a very special guest with me today. I have Corey with me today. What's up, Yo, Corey? What's going on? What's going on? Corey the brand Marley. Yes. My brand name is, well, my designer name is Marley. My artist name is Marley. Oh, you, I really you just do music too? No, I'm an artist. Oh, like, like painting, like painting and, stuff. and stuff. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Got you, got you, got you, got you. I was just saying, I ain't, no, I ain't read that in the cliff <laughs> no, notes. No, I ain't going to get into the music. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got that type of voice. Okay, cool. We're going to have a good time. It's just me and Corey today. And, you know, if you are new to the par- podcast, sometimes it's a squad episode. Sometimes it's just me and a guest. Sometimes it's just me and one other pod member. You never know what you get on club culture. So, Corey, man. How did you learn about the podcast? How did you learn about Club Culture? So I found out about Club Culture because I made a status saying that I wanted to get into doing more podcasts. Yeah. And my cousin um, yeah. actually tagged you and let me know that the podcast was dope. So I went and did my research. And that's when I reached out to you because I really did want to be a part of this podcast. Because mm-hmm. I feel like it was something I could relate to instead of just general ongoing questions like, I can have a conversation about anything, but I love when I can actually relate mm-hmm. to the conversation and to who I'm having the conversation with. Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> what do you? What was the one thing that has stood out to you when you just going through our clips and stuff? Was it the funny stuff? Was it the the mental wellness stuff? What really? What was the first thing? It was like, oh, okay, they different or they funny or um, something. I feel like I, all of it was kind of like relatable, and it stood out. But I feel like the most really was the intro. Uh-oh. When you guys like, just watch the damn podcast. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that was really funny to me. And I'm like, okay, yeah, this is going to be dope. Because I could tell, like, the person who was behind it is mm-hmm. just genuinely being themselves. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's what I love about people. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I appreciate you being here. Thank you. Cuzzo is Cam. Cam, we had him on the podcast a while back. Make sure you go check out his episode. I can't remember what it's called. But just look, just look for uh, Cam and food. <laughs> Basically, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I'm glad to have you here. We're gonna t- we're gonna get down and talk about a bunch of stuff today. Cause okay. it's just me and you. Okay, okay. And you know, whenever we have guests come on, it's all about them and what they've been up to, what they got going on, and their perspectives. Mm-hmm. So I like to start off with every guest a game of weird or not. Weird or not is we're gonna I'm gonna give you a headline and you just gotta let me know if you think it's weird or not and you get one sentence to explain why. Okay. Okay. Uh, inmate seriously injured in a hit and run soon after his escape from a Hawaii jail. Is that weird or not? That's <laughs> that's weird. Why? Because you just wasted all your time to get out just to get hit. And <laughs> yeah. you get to the hospital, you're going right back. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, yeah, that's weird. Um, man arrested after allegedly boarding Delta flight using a photo of another passenger's ticket. Is that weird or no? In this day and age, no. It's so, like, it, that's happening. Okay. I don't consider that weird. Okay. Okay. <laughs> if you get much. <laughs> Uh, Atlanta man sentenced to life in prison for a fatally shooting lifelong friend over a $35 debt. Is that weird or no? No, because it's $35. You don't have to go kill nobody for $35. So it is weird. No, that would be weird. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> that's weird as hell, actually. Okay. That's worse than shooting your friend over a stack. Over a stack? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Grandmother of Juneteenth taken back land where childhood home was burned by racist Racist mob in 1939. This was a terribly written headline. Whoever wrote this one. <laughs> I'm going to re-say it in my way. Yeah. <laughs> a woman who has been coined the grandmother of Juneteenth is taking back her childhood homeland that was burned down by a racist mob in 1939. Is that weird or not? No. Why? I feel like it's mine and I'm coming back for everything that I was owed, I guess okay. I would say. She came back for 40 acres in the mule. Yeah. Get her her stuff. Um, Carly Russell placed on a 12-month supervised probation after pleading guilty and kidnapping hoax. Judge says it would be a waste of government resources to put you in jail. Is that weird or no? That's weird because you kidnap somebody, you need to serve jail time. You remember Carly Russell, her whole story? 
Um, I remember the name. Okay, she was the girl that called the police saying that she saw a four year old child. Oh, huh. Lock her ass. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm trying not to curse, but yeah. <laughs> you can curse on this podcast. This is an adult podcast. Yeah, it's a jail. She, she stressed me out. That whole situation stressed me out because what you laughing for? Like, yeah, she needs to be locked up. <laughs> the judge said it'd be a waste of government resources to put her in jail. So that's why she on 12 month probation. I feel like that's not for her in that situation. She needs to be in jail because being on probation, she's still free almost, mm-hmm. kind of. Okay. So you think people that need to be in jail for lying about s- situations that... To that extent, occur? yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, former Nickelodeon producer Dan Schneider addresses allegations and claims of abuse from the doc quite on set. I definitely owe some people some apologies. Is that weird or no? That's weird because... Why? That don't I, so I didn't watch the document yet because I already got my a lot of trauma going on and I don't want to be traumatized and I seen one clip and it almost made me cry mm-hmm. but to know that he said that yeah that's weird because you think you owe them an apology you do mm-hmm. and it didn't I haven't heard it myself but by listening to it it don't give me like you're genuinely sorry mm-hmm. okay Dollar Tree and then. Uh, I don't know why I can't read. Dollar Tree announces to close down a thousand stores due to inflation and thefts. Is that weird or no? It's not weird that they're closing. It's weird that people stealing from Dollar Tree. <laughs> okay. But if that's <laughs> leading them to not making no money hey, to man, close. It's not a dollar no more. It's really it's not. It's not a dollar that's no more. So. 125. If anything, they should just change the name <laughs> so people can understand. Like, it's not a dollar no more. <laughs> uh, Arkansas woman pleads. Not guilty to selling over 20 boxes of stolen human body parts. Is that weird or no? That is weird. <laughs> Why? <Yeah. laughs> Why? Because you know you did that. Why are you trying to say you're not guilty? Okay. If okay. you got caught, you caught. But to <laughs> say you're not guilty knowing you didn't sell these people's body parts, I don't, the world is crazy. That's weird. <laughs> That's weird. A new street turn has officially started No Diddy, and it aims to replace No Homo. Is that weird or no? No Diddy and the replace of No Homo? Yeah. Wait a minute. I just <laughs> thought. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, damn, they both. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's weird. It's just funny. Because <laughs> if you actually listen, because at first I'm like, what? Then I had to say, like, wait, No Diddy. <laughs> no homo Y'all I, The people is crazy <laughs> Who would make that <laughs> I'll probably start saying this No oh diddy Oh my gosh um, Okay <laughs> last one The Supreme Court of Louisiana Has ruled a law That allows victims of child sex abuse To sue their abusers Years after the crime Is unconstitutional I normally can't speak from, For everyone In those type of situations mm-hmm. Cause it's kind of like With the Nickelodeon situation Is years later And yeah. now y'all saying something Mm-hmm. Me personally, I'm telling off back. I'm not waiting. Mm-hmm. But everybody is built different, different, and raised different. Mm-hmm. And under the circumstances, they may not know how to say what needs to be said to get that jurisdiction. It's not weird, or it wouldn't be a no. Nah. I just feel like when people wait twenty some years to tell, mm-hmm. that part is weird to me. Because what took you so long? Okay, but I I still want people to understand. Like I get. It. I, I try to see both point of views. Mm-hmm. I just know me personally. I'm not waiting 20 years. Mm-hmm. If you did something to me, I'm telling. In that in that extent. Mm-hmm. But I also know me. Well, I'm not going to say that on this podcast. You already said it. But, <laughs> but um, uh, yeah. <laughs> that kind of, now that went a little deep. That was much longer than the sentence. Yeah, because <laughs> I could actually talk on that because I, I. We, we can talk I know on me. You want to start there since we already um, here? We can. Okay, cool. All right. So we can, I, I would say, when you ask me, did we need to talk about some weekend? I didn't watch the document yet, mm-hmm. documentary yet yeah. on Nickelodeon. Yeah. But I would, I could say at the age of 15, I knew what I was doing. Mm-hmm. I knew what I wanted. Before that age, I just didn't act on it until I was, you know, preteen. So I probably have a couple hit shows, but that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, um, just speaking to the part, have you ever been 
uh, sexually abused? No. Okay. So you don't actually know what the feeling feels like to be abused in that way. Yeah, that's why I try to say I could see from two points of views. Mm -hmm. I would, I, I could say I've never been sexually abused. Yeah. However, it was a time at my young age where so I was sleeping. I did feel somebody touch me. Yeah. But I took the hand and placed it where I wanted it to be because it's like, yeah. if you're going to do it, do it. That's yeah. why I say I knew what I, I wanted at that time. Mm -hmm. So I don't consider it yeah. like sexual abuse. Yeah. Once they start trying to kiss and shit, I had to go because now you're doing too much. Okay. Well, um, I'll put it in perspective for you. I also had people that tried to sexually abuse me. And I was young. They were young. Um, it wasn't like the power dynamic between an older person and someone young. It was right. both two young people. And I didn't want it to happen. And I fought it off so that it wouldn't happen, mm -hmm. right? Uh, successfully, I was able to fight it off because some people, they do try to fight it off right. and they can't uh, overcome that power uh, dynamic. So long story short, I still never told anybody that that happened because it was a cousin and we were at a family event and this person tried to do it at a family event. Mm -hmm. And so I just didn't have that courage or I also it was it just happened and as soon as it happened we had an auntie come downstairs and I feel like that was like my way to finally just get away because the auntie mm -hmm. came downstairs and it's like nothing in me was like let me go tell this person this person just try to do something that I didn't want happen to happen to me because I also didn't know what they was doing I just right. didn't want them to touch me right. so uh just to put that personal thing out there into a perspective for you I didn't tell anybody until I graduated from college I told my childhood best friend when we were like 14, but I didn't tell my mom or my parents until I graduated from college that, hey, somebody tried to do this to me, and now that I'm older, I understand that that would have been molestation because they were yeah. older. That would have been sexual assault, and I actually was affected by that because I have dreams about it now. Really? Yeah. I mean, when it happened to me, I, I think about it, um, and honestly – me saying that on this podcast was the first time ever I've mm -hmm. said that out loud. Mm -hmm. Like, not even to my closest friends and yeah. family. Yeah. Um, so, it's nothing that made me uncomfortable. I do think about that night often. Yeah. But that's why I say I don't consider it, like, abuse because I basically let it happen because I knew it was something that, in that moment, shit, we here now, you might as well do it. Mm -hmm. you, you don't have to. I'm one of the people, like, just be up front with me. Mm-hmm. I feel like I've been like that all my life. Like, all you got to do is talk. So, but it did get to the point where now you trying to kiss and shit. No, we not doing that. So you let somebody feel on you, but y'all didn't actually have sex? No. Okay. So that's why I don't really consider it that much of yeah. an abuse. Yeah. But I also, even with hearing what you just said, that's why I say I can see two point of views from mm -hmm. it. So I don't want nobody to feel like I'm insensitive to the situations. Yeah. Because some people are, don't have that courage or don't know how to go about it of even, like, speaking on it, or mm -hmm. some people may feel embarrassed that they weren't able to fight it off. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to be insensitive to those people. Mm -hmm. That's why I put emphasis on yeah. I can only speak for me. Yeah. Yeah, it's wrong overall, mm -hmm. but I'd be wrong if I say, well, everybody know what they wanted at 15 because everybody didn't. There's mm -hmm. some people who's, damn, they're knocking on 30 that don't even know what they want out of life. Mm -hmm. For me, I, I kind of was mature early on. So I, I I really did like know like oh you touching me oh well, let me take your hand and you gonna touch me right here if that's mm -hmm. the case mm -hmm. so I don't, I try to say my my um point of view yeah without sounding like I don't care about it's the people who or, yeah yeah I get you I get you I like to talk about uh sexual assault a lot on the podcast because I do think a lot of people speak uh, on that topic without talking to actual like survivors of it to get yeah. to understand why they waited so long. Yeah. Or I just, I wasn't educated on what the hell was happening. I just Which knew I didn't sense. want it to happen. That, <laughs> that, that's why I always just be like, I can, I can tell you my side, but I can't speak for them. Yeah. Yeah. Like I know personally, if I felt like it was too, too much, mm -hmm. I would have said something. Yeah. Um, now that person people. also, did they try to push themselves onto you after you said, no, I'm good. Uh, well, they didn't even have to try. After the little kissing part, I got up and I went to go get in my mom's bed because we was in my room. Mm -hmm. I left. But then I don't know if it was in, in that same year or it was close by. We ended up same room again. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of went all the way. Mm -hmm. 
So it still wasn't like, I knew what I was, at that point it was like, okay, I had time to think about it, so let's do it. Now we don't, we don't, we don't ever start episodes <laughs> off this deep and this serious. <laughs> I, I promise you we don't, but I, I love, I love the conversation. Yes. You are, you, you was just nervous. <laughs> you yeah. didn't think you was coming here. I, I wouldn't about, think like, you're not going to be kissing me. Yeah. We can do whatever, but kissing. No, I'm Let saying me, you was just nervous in the elevator. Oh no! Oh yeah, yeah. I, Cause just, I'm like I once I'm comfortable. Yeah. I'm not nervous. Yeah. I can talk all day. Yeah. I'm. I be shy. Yeah. That's why you gonna see me smiling this whole it's podcast. Okay. Cause I'm trying. I'm it's in my okay. head fighting okay. for my life, not knowing what to say, <laughs> you're, making you're, sure I don't you'll cuss be too shocked. much. All the stuff people have said on this couch. Yes. Um. Now we, I'm gonna move over to some hot topics with you. Uh, so a lot of podcasts, you know, you said it, that a lot of those tend to speak about celebrities and, uh, just news that ain't got nothing to do with you. Yeah. Okay. And I love, I love minding my business. Yeah. Anybody will tell you I'll be minding my business. Now, if your business come across my desk. Uh-huh. That's different. <laughs> that's different. I was minding my business. It just came across my desk. They need, mm-hmm. the investigation needs to be open. Okay. Other than that, I'll be, be minding my business. I love minding my business. Okay. Well, we're going to make you be the hot topic. So okay. we want to learn about Corey. Tell, uh, t- tell me something that is very unique about you that somebody that even know you wouldn't know. Wouldn't know? Wouldn't know. Um, I do have people I talk to every day that literally know everything about me. I literally just had somebody ask me this. I was playing a game. Mm. The game is called To Be Real or To Be Messy. Mm. So they, I was with my twin. He sounded like a brother to me. Mm-hmm. So the person asked me to tell them something that they don't know mm. that I would consider a dark secret. And it was like, he probably know everything about me at this point. So yeah. it would be my cousin, mm-hmm. who is my best friend. Mm-hmm. Who is my sister? It's like she everything to me. Her name Dodge. Okay. She also is a hairstylist. So if y'all want y'all hair done, Go to House of CB, <laughs> Cocaine Blondie on Instagram, House of CB. Okay. Um. So she would like that would be one person, like one of many, I could say that know a lot about me. Mm-hmm. So I would don't feel like I could say I, if she was to see this and I said something, she'd be like, "Girl, I know, boy, I know that." Yeah, she, yeah, yeah. Like, bitch, you on that line? Be yourself. Uh-huh. We hate when people don't be themselves. <laughs> So, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe in the future when I come back on, then I might say yeah. something. But as well, of now, this entirety no. of the episode, if you think about it, just okay. tell me. Just okay. tell me. Uh, we can come back to that. Um, okay, now let's talk about your upbringing. Where you, where you were born? I was born in Chicago. All right. I'm from the low end. Low end, south side? Mm-hmm. Okay. Shout out um, south side. Shout low out end. to the south side, low end. All right. Uh, well, I, I also claim the hundreds because my... Family grew up in the hundreds. We I was had, just about you know to how ask you that. um your granny crib. Yeah. So all my cousins just be at my. I was just crib. about to ask yeah. you that. From, uh, are you from the hundreds? I would say that. I, okay, I'm like kind of from both. Uh-huh. I would say that. My, uh, my but mom's I love side. They from the hundreds. They from the hundreds. What yeah. part? Yeah. Uh, Stewart Ridge. They call that's the that's the neighborhood. Would that, that be like 120 some? I couldn't tell you that part. Okay. I I wasn't born. Uh, I didn't grow up there. They did, <laughs> but I couldn't. So tell you that. since we on that topic, my uh, me growing up in the hundreds is really where my name came from. Mm-hmm. So my granny granny she lived on 119th and LaSalle. Mm-hmm. We was always around the block. Like we literally grew up out there, mm-hmm. Lafayette, LaSalle, Prairie, Perry, and a few more blocks. And we, I had an older cousin, so he was the oldest out of all our cousins, mm-hmm. and he passed away around the neighborhood. And um, his nickname, his name was Marlo, but his nickname was Marley. So we just, you know how back in the day, everybody, wherever you from, you had your own name. So we called it Marley Grove. Mm-hmm. So it was like once I started designing and starting my businesses, I felt like I didn't take his nickname, but I wanted to incorporate that into something that represented who I am and where yeah. I come from, basically. So that's how I came up with Marley. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why I, my first business, it was Colors by Marley, where I just painted on shoes, designed on clothes, uh, and I started hosting sipping paint parties. Mm-hmm. Um, what came from that? And then I just started going by Marley, for real. So in the streets, you're going to either hear people come. So my high school nickname was Big Corey, uh, but like far as my designer, artist, and where I'm from, I go by Marley. Okay. That's uh, how that came about. What uh, high school you uh, graduated from? 
I went to Dunbar. Dunbar? Okay. Yes. Okay. All I know is Finger, uh, Cor- uh, Corliss. Yeah, Corliss. Uh, See, that's what Whitney. everybody from the neighborhood, they really went to Finger. Uh-huh. Like, some people went to their own high schools, uh-huh. but most majority of everybody went to Finger, and I just knew, like, I couldn't go to – I didn't want to spend my high school career fighting. Even though it ended up happening, like, that's nothing you can stop. But that's all I know about If Finger. I was going to Finger, <laughs> yeah. it was going to be a brawl uh-huh. every day because the people we was in school with was literally – Neighborhood neighbors, they mm-hmm. all went to the same school. We went to the same grammar school, none but fighting, and it was just like, no, I'm tired of fighting. Yeah. So I made it all the way through high school until I got to my junior year. Okay, I w- I, w- I want to speak yeah. to that because I my uh, my mom she uh, moved us away from Chicago as soon as we pretty much was born. Like when I was three, four, we moved to Indiana. So we didn't have to go through CPS and Chicago uh, public school system, if anybody that does not know what that is. Uh, So I don't actually know how it was to go through that school system, but my cousins did. And all I remember is fights and stuff. They they also went to finger too. So I wanted to speak to that. You bringing that up. Can you not really escape that? Like, is there a universe where you could have just say, I don't want to fight. You got it. Um, I would say, because I love speaking from my own perspective, mm-hmm. uh, I will. For everybody else, I can say it depends on the person you are and the people you surround yourself with. Mm-hmm. Me personally, to be completely honest, I've been fighting since the play Madden Kindergarten. Mm-hmm. So I didn't say that's what was destined to happen because I did try not to be that way, but... If I like to fight mm. <laughs> and not and not fight very well, okay. not to be negative, y'all, because I'm not a negative person, but I let people know, like, if you want to fight, we can fight. I just hope you know what you're doing because yeah. I know how to fight very well. Yeah, so um, I don't think could have I could I have escaped that? I would say no, because based on me, my personality. Um, the people I was surrounded with that I considered friends and family, big emphasis on family because I did go to high school with an older sister and my younger brother. He's right under me. Mm-hmm. I don't think I was going to escape that for too long. I, I just knew I wasn't the type to start nothing. But if you started it, then I have every right to finish it. Okay. Okay. As long as you know what you're doing. I'm not no bully. I, I've had a, I even had a, a moment where I was about to fight. And I asked the person straight up, like, are you scared? Mm-hmm. And he, he said no. And I hit him because at this point, you want to fight. <laughs> okay. But I did give you that, that option to, because I'm not a bully. If you're not going to fight me back, yeah. I'm not one of the people that's going to continue to yeah. try to fight. Like, no, that's pointless. I'm not fighting nobody that's not going to fight back. I need a challenge. I need you to swing, pull or something, do something. Yeah. You want to be here? Yeah. Okay, I get you. I get you. Speak to the ups and downs <laughs> and the clientele that you have to work with with being an um, entrepreneur though. so with being an entrepreneur every client is different mm-hmm. i put emphasis on that everybody is different some give you a hard time some try to give you a hard time mm-hmm. and then some like far as my business i i, I don't have many difficult clients or mm-hmm. customers most of the time they want me to leave them alone until i'm done okay that's how much they believe like yeah i had someone tell me like don't call me or text me until you're done mm-hmm. and i'm like i still gotta be professional yeah. like Yo, shit ain't coming time. I got to tell you about this. <laughs> yeah. Like, shit ain't going right. I, I'm, but I'm the type that is going to update you at every moment. I'm not going to go missing. Especially mm-hmm. once you pay me, you got my full undivided attention. But I'm, I'm so good at what I do. People believe in me. Mm-hmm. They would be like, you ain't got to... You ain't got to do that with me type shit. Like, mm-hmm. do your thing. I'm here when you ready. Yeah. But I did have a difficult... I've had a few difficult ones to where it's just like, you know what? I, I would refund a motherfucker quick, mm-hmm. even if I've done the thing. Sure. But I'm not dealing with no disrespect. Yeah. And if I try to shy away from it, that's me sparing you. Mm-hmm. Especially because nine times out of ten, it's coming from someone who don't know me. Mm-hmm. So you talking crazy and all of that. I'm giving you a pass because you don't know me. Like, mm-hmm. I don't even tolerate that. But by this being a business, I feel like entrepreneurs always have to be on point and professional at all times especially yeah. black owned businesses because people quick to get on facebook and bash you yeah and all of that but i'm so good at my customer service and what i do mm-hmm. 
I had this one time with this, I forgot the situation. A girl, she said something about my business. I didn't do nothing but repost it. And when I say the whole Facebook told her ass up, yeah. I ain't I literally didn't have to say nothing. Yeah. Cause that's how much people believe in me and they know like he not even that type of person that will get over on you, mm-hmm. talk crazy to you. Your work is gonna be done to your the ability you want it to be, if not more, because I'm always put my own mix in it. Mm-hmm. So it'd be like difficult customers. If I feel like you're difficult, I'm gonna handle the situation in a professional way. But do know you will never be able to buy nothing for me. I will never have a conversation with you again. Yeah. Even if it's somebody I know, if you give me a hard time doing a simple custom, mm-hmm. and I know you, and you be like, "Oh, I can't wait to the next." You can say all that, but you don't even know like there will be no next custom. There will be you better. You have to find somebody else. Mm-hmm. Cause I don't deal with that at all. What would you say to the new entrepreneur that? doesn't have that clientele just yet, that consistency and people knowing them and their work, what would you say to them if they got to pay their bills and they got to take, they feel like they have to take every client and get that bag going when they're now having these difficult clients that they got to work with? What would you say to them? I would say um, if the client or customer is difficult, even if you know you need that money, yeah. you don't have to deal with it. Mm-hmm. Because I'd rather you be at peace with knowing that you sent them somewhere else than to put that stress on you to still take this customer and they stress you out. Because mm-hmm. then it makes you, that turns into like, okay, now I don't want to do it. I don't like doing this no more. Because a lot of people, that's why a lot of people went out of business. Mm-hmm. They got difficult customers. They didn't like it. Now they don't like the business. Mm-hmm. Which is, it's like, I love what I'm doing. I'm not doing it for the money. So your money means nothing to me. Mm-hmm. If you give me a hard time, I'm not dealing with you based on how... The time you're giving me, not because you send me, you're trying to get an order made for $300. Mm-hmm. I can easily go do something to get that $300, but you're not finna mess with my piece. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I would say when dealing with a difficult customer, just try to keep your cool and handle it handle it to your best ability. Excuse me. I started my own design company when I was fresh out of college just to make some money. Until I get my first job. And I was enjoying the whole working on your own time, clocking in and do your own thing. But the clientele is definitely starting to get uh, lower income. And those lower income customers, they tend to have the most feedback, the most things to say about the work. And they probably didn't even know what the heck they wanted before they came to service you. Didn't know what they wanted. Didn't have the money for the actual service that they yeah. thought they wanted. Yeah. But, yeah, definitely those be the ones that give you the hardest time. The ones that come asking for discounts and all of that. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not dealing with no difficult people. <laughs> How long have you been uh, being an entrepreneur? Um, so I would say, so I've been designing and making things since 2014 when I was in college. Mm-hmm. But I've been an entrepreneur since 2019 when I started my first business, which was the uh, sip and paint business. How far did you get into college? Like, I would what say year sophomore. You... Okay, sophomore year. Uh, when you stopped college and then you just had to come back home and figure out life, what what headspace was that, was that Corey in? That Corey was, okay, I'm going to do the entrepreneurship. On the side, but I was still, I still had like a nine to five job. Like mm-hmm. I never strayed away from nine to five because like, I love working. It helped me build a better customer service. Mm-hmm. So at that time, back in the, around that time, it was more so I'm designing on the side, but I do have a full time job. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, when did you get the courage to be like, you know what? I can s- stop this nine to five and fully be. A full entrepreneur, full time. I would say that came about, I would say 2020. Okay. Yeah. Oh, during the pandemic? Yeah, but I had a job, but it was like, I was just like, you know what? I, I want to see how it is to not have to get up and get to work, mm-hmm. be on my own time. Mm-hmm. And I did that for a year straight. Mm-hmm. And I would say it had its ups and downs because I loved having a job because I didn't have to use the money from like, customs mm-hmm, to pay for mm-hmm, anything mm-hmm. so it was building but then once i was just doing that work it was like okay the money i make from each custom has to go towards something either a bill yeah i'm always outside i love outside <laughs> so i would be outside so stuff like that so yeah. it was like 
It has its it ups and downs, but I enjoyed it because I was on my time. I mm-hmm. had more time to learn how to perfect my craft. What would you say was the turning point for you? For you to like start seeing like I'm really good at this. Like this is probably what I'm supposed to do in life. Um, just the feedback that I was getting from close friends and family. They really pushed me to keep going because mm-hmm. there'd be times where I would make something and I'd be like, I don't like it. Mm-hmm. And I posted like in my close friends or something and everybody be like, well, what you don't like about it? Because it's raw as fuck. And mm-hmm. I just be like, I don't know. I don't like it. And I feel like if you don't like your work, nobody else is going to like it. But every time I don't like something, they like it or that customer likes it. Mm-hmm. And I'd be like, you sure? Like you, you sure it ain't nothing extra? Like I'd be knowing in my head, like I probably half assed it. Mm-hmm. Didn't do everything I was supposed to do. But for the fact that you still love it, Mm -hmm. that just made me realize, like, I'm really good at what I do, even when I half-ass it or don't give my all. Mm -hmm. So at that point, once I start getting that type of feedback, I'm like, yeah, this is something that I could do. Were you always interested in fashion? Or did Um, did it evolve into that? I feel like it it evolved. Like, I always was well-dressed. I'm not a designer here. Like, if I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. I can make something out of nothing look like a lot mm-hmm. in so many words. Mm-hmm. So I feel like as me, as business was going, as life was going, it kind of evolved into being more fashionable. Mm-hmm. So I would say that was something that's, that evolved. Now, are you self-taught? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm a self-taught. I have taken a sewing class before, Yeah. but that was to basically learn how to make dresses. Yeah. Um. So the class, it was... Actually, a beginner's class, but for me, it was like I already knew half of the stuff. I just really need to know how to measure, like mm-hmm. what, how to go about starting a dress and like that. Because mm-hmm. I did wanted to, I wanted to get into prom dresses, mm-hmm. but after a while, I'm just like, you know what? That's probably not my lane. Mm-hmm. So I'm just stick to denim. I love denim because mm-hmm. you can do anything you want to yeah. do. Yeah, I can manipulate it to however I want it to look. So I'm like, yeah, I just want to, I like, I, w- I can make a dress, mm-hmm. but I prefer everybody to come at me with a denim idea, basically. Can't denim get very expensive? It can. Yeah. There's ways around that. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, denim can get expensive. Um, most of my pieces come from old jeans. Okay. Like, I've been getting into thrifting, so I go to the thrift store, buy a couple jeans. Like, I made a puffer coat out of, like, Six pair of jeans. Mm-hmm. So it does, I would say that will be a way to get around the expensive denim because I could go to the fabric store to get denim, but why I do that when I go buy six pair of $3 pants from mm-hmm. the thrift store and do it, I mean, it's going to take longer to destruct those, forming them, form them into the um, fabric pr- pattern that I want. But that's the point of doing what I love to do. Uh, For... Making clothes, do you feel like you have to, like, put yourself in only just one lane? And, like, because de- if denim is your thing, do you, when you have clients that come to you and they want something that's not denim, would you be like, you know, denim is my thing and this is what I want to do? Mm-hmm. Or do you take on those other um, if I If I feel like I can do it, I will. Like, I, I'm a jack of all trades. I got so much going on. I make dresses, I do denim designs, sip and paint parties, teeth mm-hmm. whitening, mm-hmm. Teeth tooth whitening? gems, I'm a dental assistant, like okay. I got, it's nothing that I can't do if I if I put my mind to it. Mm-hmm. I would prefer all customers come at me with denim mm-hmm. designs, but if it's something like a dress or a little party outfit, or like turning a shirt into a toothpiece, if I feel like I can do it, I will do it. So as a designer, you really have the ability to do whatever design that you feel like you can do. Mm-hmm. So it's no limits when you're a designer for real. That's, that's your nine to five dental mm-hmm. work? Oh, no, it used to be. I'm back self-employed now. Oh, okay. But that was one of my last jobs, dental assistant. I love being a dental assistant. I do want to go to school um, in the future to become an actual dental hygienist. Mm-hmm. But right now, I just feel like my calling is the fashion world. Okay. Do you even see a time for you to go back to school for that? If it's never is too your late. Calling? 
I mean, it depends on how far. I feel like I, I know I would go far with the fashion. Mm-hmm. So I, I do feel like I can give myself a break to just go, even if I don't get the job, just do the schooling so I can already have it under my belt. Mm-hmm. So I feel like before I'm 40, definitely. After 40, if I'm still into fashion, that's all it's going to be. I'm not going to keep. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing sip and paint parties, teeth white. No, it's going to be one thing. Uh-huh. <laughs> Whichever will make me rich first, if I'm, not all. <laughs> being a dental hygienist, I feel like that's a cool, nice little little yeah. job to have as an older person. Yeah, that's what I'm like, okay. Because I wanted to do it this year or next year. But I'm like, I really want to push my brand and my create uh, mm-hmm. creativity. However, I will. I do see myself in like my mid thirties going to school for that, mm-hmm. just in case I get tired of this. Like, I don't think I'll get tired of it, but it's like I still want to have some type of structural nine to five to mm-hmm. fall back on. Like, if this doesn't work out, even though I know it will, I could just go be a dental assistant, put myself in school. Mm-hmm. I want to go through some fashion trends and just ask you, what is your favorite uh, trend from growing up? That you feel like could come back. So my favorite trend from growing up that technically uh, it's it's making a comeback. Um, true religion. True religion. I love when people bring me true religion jeans to turn into something else. Mm-hmm. Um, just yesterday I had on a true religion hoodie, true religion underwear. Bro, that true shit is expensive to <laughs> be saying. Hey, jeans. come change this and do something different with it. No, but no, they actually got cheaper. Like yeah. on their actual website, they have so many discounts going on. Okay. So it's not like back in the day it was expensive, yeah. but now it's cheaper than what it was. Okay. But yeah, most like I just did a um a girl bought the boot cut jeans and I turned it into a skirt and a corset. Okay. So I would love to do a collab with them. Hopefully they see this podcast. <laughs> they see all my tags and mentions. If they don't, y'all tag me on the True Religion page yeah. at Marley365 <laughs> underscore. Let's get it going with True Religion. But yeah, I love True Religion when I was a kid in high mm-hmm. school. Um, and it's come, it's making a comeback. It's definitely a day stake in, in Chicago. Yeah, my cousin. She, I think she part of the reason it's coming back. <laughs> Sexy Red. I call her my cousin. That's my ghetto cousin. Oh, shit, I actually <laughs> thought you was talking about a real cousin. No, <laughs> Sexy Red is my cousin. She put on her trues, and we get ratchet. That is my cousin. You like that Get It Sexy song? That's the song of the That's summer. That's the song of the summer? She got the summer with that. Get It Sexy or Yeah Glow? I love both of them. But, oh. <laughs> That's a hard one, because uh-huh. that song got some lyrics that actually I've posted while posting the outfit. hmm uh-huh. Damn. Can it be 50-50 with that? Or it got to be either or. You got to choose one. <laughs> uh, you just said song of the summer for getting sexy. I, it got to be. Like, they both could be so. I, I know, love them both. I know. <laughs> it got to be getting sexy. Okay. All right. That's my shit. <laughs> That's my shit. That is my shit. I could play that. I could play both every day, all day. Uh-huh. But getting sexy. That I can't wait to hear it in the club. I haven't heard it in the club yet. Yeah. I know I'm just have a ratchet time. Yeah, it's <laughs> getting sexy. And I want to do this little thing where I had you send me some some pictures, and you had sent some of your pieces that you have created for others. And I want us to go through these pieces and just choose uh, choose to just talk about what what inspired this and what what came. Okay. How did you get to the end result of this piece? <laughs> so we're gonna start with this. What did you make in this photo? So I made the jeans. So it's just basically a bunch a a bunch of distressed denim mm-hmm. formed into patches to be placed on another jean. I use the belt loops, and I made because okay, this is one of my close friends. His name is Brandon. Okay, he lives in Washington D.C. Okay, but when I made those, he was living in Virginia. Okay. So I had made me some, and he wanted them, and I'm like, okay, cool, I'm making for you because you're in another state. Mm-hmm. I need my stuff out in these different states. So mm-hmm. that just came about me just playing around one night, making my own pants, and he really loved them, so then he wanted them. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do it because you're not here in Chicago. Mm-hmm. You can wear them in Virginia, mm-hmm. Washington, D.C., wherever you want to go. Okay. So that's how that came about. Okay, okay. Now, what about this one? Now, this one, this is a good friend of mine. Her name is Mia. So sh- this is actually her birthday shoot. Okay. And she wanted a corset made, so I made the corset. That's really how that came about. Um, I don't think you can see it all the way, but it's just a corset with denim patches and my brand on there. 
Okay. And the back is the lace back. I use a ribbon. Okay. So that's how that came about. It was really for her birthday shoot. Oh, and it came out she nice. Went to Beyonce's concert. I'm not sure if she went, but that was the vibe she was going for, and she executed it. Ugh, it's amazing. <laughs> I loved her for that. Now, what about this? The pants, I'm guessing? Yeah, so the pants. So this is my twin I was talking about okay. uh, with the game. So this came about because uh, I we follow different designers on social media. So we tra- he wanted a piece from another designer, but not as close to theirs. So basically, so these jeans is on my website, mm-hmm. uh, millennialriches.com, and I call them the chaotic black because it's really just a pair of black jeans, with a bunch of other black jeans ripped up and just placed anywhere on the jeans. It's a flare bottom. Mm-hmm. That's why they look so big at the bottom. Um, I use a red stitching. So this one just came about from seeing something. It was like, oh, can you recreate this? I'm like, yeah, but I'm going to do it in my own way. Mm-hmm. So now, how do, how's the process goes? Because if you got custom pieces that you sell on your website, do the people just like, City, you their sizes or so. You have- so with that, uh, with the men jeans, because I'm still working, because I make skirts and stuff too. So what I would do is I will put the jean size. Like if you was to go on the website, and this you will see the different sizes, mm-hmm. and then they well, it's only I got that color black and then a denim one. Mm-hmm. So the denim one got the different shades of denim, but this one just has the black. Mm-hmm. So they put it in the cart, black. Now I do say in the um description if you want to add on like chains or different color patches. Mm-hmm. Once you purchase that item in your your jean size, mm-hmm. just email me and then we could discuss what you want to add on, what you want to take away. Okay. Basically. Okay. What about this piece? So this is my sister, bestie cousin that I was telling you sister about. Sister, bestie cousin. Yeah, so <laughs> she took her and her uh, girls, the my girls too, I love them. Um, they actually did 48 hours in New York. Okay. So she was like, we want to do a denim look in New York, you know. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to make y'all a couple skirts. It was three of them. I made three skirts. Mm-hmm. What I didn't know is she was going to be doing a photo shoot in Little Times Square in the skirt. Mm-hmm. So when I seen this picture, I'm like, wait, you didn't tell me you was going to yeah. do a photo shoot. It looks nice. Yeah. And that's what, like, so this is just one of my denim skirts with patches. Yeah. But what made me love the piece even more is the fact that the top is an actual top from Zara. Mm-hmm. And then the shoe she had on was the denim um Alexander McQueen. Okay. So she put it together perfectly. Yeah. And then decided to take a photo shoot mm-hmm. in New York. And I just felt like that promo alone was amazing to me. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. It's a great photo, too. Yes. Nice the New York the photos hit different. Yeah. Okay. I got one more from you. So this is, uh, this actually is the same New York photo shoot. Mm-hmm. This is one of my girls, Ken. So I did hers in black because she wanted a specific black. Mm -hmm. So I just, it's basically the same as the last skirt, black denim patched up. Mm -hmm. Uh, She wore with, I think that was an Alexander Wayne shirt. Okay. And I like this photo because it's black. Like you could get denim, the regular color denim and do something with it. But if you could do something with the black, like with my twin with the black jeans, that's even better. I personally think that your pants is the make and break to your outfit. Yeah, I think that's where you can really create a statement, especially today when people are embracing the baggy look way differently. I'm than loving the I, I'm loving the baggy look now. The flare, mm-hmm. I because I before it even got popular in my mind, I'm like I'm so tired of tight ass pants. Mm-hmm. I'm old the skinny jeans. I don't jean know fade. who made skinny jeans. Like, I, I'm not gonna say I didn't like them because I used to be a skinny jean fiend. Yeah. Like everything needed to be fitted, but now it's like I'm not wearing that tight shit. I want an oversized shirt. Yeah, and give me some baggy flare jeans. Yeah. I want to feel comfortable. I just don't understand how, like, the world can be very homophobic. I don't understand and how. And everybody doing the same shit. How we got to skinny jeans. How were we were able to convince men to wear skinny jeans? <laughs> and we came from baggy clothes already. Exactly. How do we, how do we convince and you? And I, do I don't think nobody ever asked that question. Yeah. Because it's like. The world is homophobic, but you're going to go get a pair of tight jeans. Yeah. Not only are they tight. You sagging in them. Yeah. But you homophobic. Yeah. But you got your ass on. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't get that. <laughs> don't and get I hate either. sagging. Sagging, uh-huh. it annoys the fuck out of me. I don't I don't sag because it don't it don't make me feel comfortable. I'm gonna say I'm, no, because what <laughs> you just said is why I don't get sagging. How yeah, do you feel like, comfortable? I don't because if the pants too little, just get your damn size. Yeah. I don't get that. 
I got to be comfortable. Yeah, it is. It, 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 it ain't even got to not fit you. Like niggas, they just be sagging just to it, sag. It, just be sagging. Yeah, I know certain And kids. the pants to be fitted well, but they just still want to sag. And it's yeah. just like, nobody want to see that. Well, I, I wouldn't say nobody want to see that. I just know oh, I don't feel comfortable sag. Even though, because I do have some jeans where would be like, damn, I can only wear these if I sag. Mm-hmm. And I'd be like, fuck it, I'm going to just have to sag. Mm-hmm. But then I'd be like, I'm not doing that. I hate sagging. Mm-hmm. Now, if I'm wear a belt and my pants falling down, that's different. I'm not mm-hmm. trying to sag. I just ain't have a belt on. Mm-hmm. But like to just get up and be like, oh, I'm going to put this outfit in sag? Yeah. No, I'm not doing that. I don't know who uh, looking, looking for that. I ain't never heard of The no. people they uh, try to be homophobic uh, <laughs> to or about. Because if I see something, I'm going to look. <laughs> I'm not going to hold you. I'm just not doing it. Yeah. Now, would you call yourself also a stylist or just a designer? Both. I would say I'm a stylist because I have styled people for their birthdays. Mm-hmm. Even before I started making clothes, um, I had one person specifically who she would make sure every year for her birthday, I styled her in at least three outfits. Okay. Every year. It was like for four years straight, I would style her for her birthday. So I'm good at styling. I just feel like people get it. They're too confused. Mm-hmm. If I'm making your outfit, I don't feel like I have to also style it. Mm-hmm. Like, you can send me the outfit you want made. Okay, cool. But don't start sending me like, oh, I want to get these or these. That has nothing to do with me. Mm-hmm. Unless you're going to pay that styling fee because those are two different businesses to me. Like, I could design the clothes, but that's what I'm doing, designing. Mm-hmm. You're not finna stress me out to look for no accessories, to style it, none of that unless you pay that fee. Okay. So that's the only problem I've I've been having lately. People just want me to just do everything. Yeah. I'm like, no. Have you seen all the clips that people have posted with Burner Boy when he's on tour and his stylist is on the stage with him and Burner Boy like throws his apparel out into the crowd and the stylist like one time try to like get it from him before he did it because those are pieces that mm-hmm. he does not own. He just styles you for the day. <laughs> Have I you seen, seen those clips? I didn't see those clips, but I did go to his concert when he was here, mm-hmm. and I did see him throwing some shit in the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, if you, okay, you can throw your shit in the crowd, but don't throw the shit that I got to get back to the people because yeah. we're going to pay for it. Yeah. You yeah. are borrowing in this. There's an don't actual video shit. out there. The stylist, like, and he ain't wrong because it, it, it probably it would fall back on that stylist on. Yeah. That designer saying, well, I gave it to you. Uh-huh. You should be the one to protect my stuff. Yeah. Unless you pay for it. When you pay for it, you can do whatever. You can throw all the shit if you want to. Uh-huh. But if you just win it for a concert, I need my shit back. I don't, yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, he ain't wrong for that. Have you ever been to, like, a salon or a barbershop and you, you just saw the person that's doing the hair and their hair's not done? Yeah, but I feel like in those settings, if you work there, maybe you just ain't got time to do your own hair yet. Mm-hmm. Now, if we outside and I see you a stylist or a barber and yeah. you looking like that, that's different. But actually at work, some days it's okay because you really do be like have a lot of clients or you just wait until the end of the day to get your hair done. Because mm-hmm. I know in some salons, the stylists will do each other hair probably like at the end of the day or during their um, free time. Mm-hmm. So I don't I don't hold that against them. Okay. Have you ever heard like people give stylists that connotation that they know how to do everybody else here but themselves? Oh yeah, I've definitely heard that. Well, I wanna do this little thing where we rate your drip. Okay. You style everybody else. Let's see if Corey got styled. <laughs> So I went through your Instagram to find photos of... I was so looking at them like, wait, when did I send those (laughs) photos? I I went through your Instagram to find some photos of you dripped out. Okay. And so I wanted you to rate your own fit. How would you rate this fit? I would rate this fit a... From one to ten, I would say a five. A five? five. Okay, why why you give it an in the middle? Um, cause I was kind of lazy with this outfit. I was supposed to do something else, but with I get lazy, <laughs> I, I can have a million things to do, and I'm gonna go lay down. Okay. And that's what this outfit, cause this really is just all I did was flip some jeans inside out, uh-huh. cut the pockets, sew them down, and I had that shirt for like three years. I bought it. You know how you buy stuff and don't wear it. Mm-hmm. It was a perfect time to wear this shirt. Uh huh. Uh huh. And yeah. that's all because I didn't want to make the original outfit. Yeah. Do you make every? 
everything you wear? Not like the shirts, but like more so denim stuff. Do you make everything or you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Most of the time, I told myself this year alone, whenever I do go out, I have to be in something something that I've made. Okay. So I'm really trying to stick to that. Now, what about this one? This one, 10. Because this outfit was actually tear new at first. But I had this Biggie shirt with Baby Blue in it. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to dye it mm-hmm. Baby Blue. Mm-hmm. And when I say so many people, like those likes, I normally like not front. I don't get that many likes on yeah. pictures. But for this actual outfit, it did a lot of numbers. Okay. Especially when I explained like how it started and I showed them how it's Because even when I wore it when it was new, everybody liked it. But to show them that I do know how to change clothing colors, mm-hmm. that made a lot of people like it more. Okay. What about this one? This is a twenty. A twenty. So I was in New Broke York. The scale. <laughs> I was I was in New York. Um, those pants were yeah. actually light denim. I flared them and um, dyed them purple. Mm-hmm. That top is actually it used to be a pink sweater from Zara. Mm-hmm. That's why you see kind of like patches, but I kept them like that. Isn't it? Most people probably think it's bleach, but it's really just the old pink material. Yeah. Um, and I had time to read that for, yeah. for real. So I'm like, okay, luckily a dude still look good. Yeah, give it like that distressed. So uh, it, yeah. Yeah. So it was just, a, it, at first it was a regular pink, like salmon color uh, sweater. Mm-hmm. Like a, it's a furry sweater. All I did was cut the sleeves. I took one of the sleeves and made it into a turtleneck. Okay. And I was in New York. I went to a ball in New York. That was actually in February of this year. Mm-hmm. And when I say I got a lot of good feedback, so this this outfit is a 20. Yeah, this is a nice one. That's a nice that was one. A 20. All right, what about this one? This one, I would say seven. Seven? Okay. Seven, eight. Okay. Because it was just, I so with the, the main, the actual pant I had, that's another thing. I bought them, and it was so hard for me to actually style them based on how they was made mm-hmm. uh, for a couple of years. I think I wore those once. Or attempted to wear them once, but the outfit didn't come out. So then I just thought about, like, this green will look good with a camo print. So I took some other camouflage. I had some camouflage joggers Mm -hmm. that I had also bought but didn't wear them for years because they were the joggers that scrunch up at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And I don't like those. I hate those joggers. I hate those so bad. Yeah. And I'm like, they just going to keep sitting there because I'm not going to wear them. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to just mix them with something. So that's how that came about. I went to a... um, First Sunday event that one of my homies threw. Mm-hmm. Everybody liked those too, so I would say seven point five eight. Okay, okay. Last one. How we feel about this one? Now this one, I would say this a ten. This was New Year's Eve. Okay, you got um, the chest out. Yeah, chest out. Hot dog, glasses. Yeah. I literally made this probably the day of. I would say ten because it's like it's that same chaoticness like those black jeans, mm-hmm. but it's more sewn down instead of just wild all over the place. Mm-hmm. And it's a flare bottle, and the top is actually from Zara. Is it a Zara top? Yeah, that's from Zara. Okay. And then the shoes you can't tell, but I actually designed those shoes too. Okay. Um, if you was up close and personal, they actually are glitter ones. Oh, okay. So I just put glitter all over now, the entire shoe. I don't know shoe. why the platform look like it's thicker than normal ones. What they just regular ones? Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. So nice. that would be a ten. Now, if you had to choose between, because this is your top rated one, and then the purple fit. If you had to choose between those two, who you got? I got the New York. Okay. That okay. was like a statement. Okay. What's the, oh, you like going to New York? So um, I went to New York for a ball with the house that I'm in. I'm in the house of Chanel. Okay. The International house of Chanel. Okay, period. Um, So this was one of my, I just joined them. So this is one of my first trips with them. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to get to know them more on a personal level, especially the house members that, that don't reside in Chicago. Mm-hmm. So um, that's why I went to New York. But I also always wanted, I've been to New York, but I went by myself. So Mm -hmm. it was like, I went out, I had somewhat fun, but I was by myself. So to be there with a group of people was even better. Mm -hmm. And then I just, this was a ball that I felt like everybody would be at or it would be better for me to be at so that people can see the type of things that I know how to make. Like the entire weekend, I only wore something that I made. Mm -hmm. And I got a lot of feedback from that. So... I, would I go back to New York? Yeah, but in the summertime. Oh, it was cold for you, to you? Yeah, hell yeah, it was I cold. I feel like New York is warmer than Chicago. Really? I went out there when it was winter, too. Like, 
uh, uh, two, no, last year, last winter that we had, mm-hmm. and like that time where people were trying to get play, play rides in like Southwest, all these other flights just kept canceling everything. Mm-hmm. It was delayed. It was for Christmas. Okay. Yeah, and I was out there. I feel like they felt like it was just fall still in out there. I felt like. I could live there. Like, we were in, our Airbnb was in Harlem. Mm-hmm. And I said, I was walking around like I was from there. Mm-hmm. I seen a car crash. <laughs> I was just like, oh. And the car pulled off. Yeah. I saw two homeless people fight in the street. See, shit like that. That shit, the, the stuff that you can see at different places that you'll see at home yeah. will make me so comfortable. Yeah. Like, I, I, I don't know why. Like, I had moved to Atlanta for some time. Mm-hmm. Well, Georgia. But I was, like, in a different part, like Duluth. Mm-hmm. When I say it was so boring, I didn't hear no gunshots, I didn't hear no sirens, no like I wanted to come <laughs> home so bad. Not because it was just like it's too quiet. Yeah, I what need you some think noise. Is somebody shoots some. Like That's this, crazy. And like <laughs> and I could really say like they ain't doing shit but popping fireworks. Mm-hmm. Here you don't know if they popping fireworks <laughs> yeah. or shooting so yeah. like it was so boring, it was so quiet. I heard crickets. I was only out there for three months. Mm-hmm. Every night I heard crickets. Okay. Now that sounds like some PTSD, Corey. I don't know. I don't know. It might be, but I was just like, I got to guns. I got to go. It was just too quiet. Like, ain't nothing going on. Like, ain't nobody called the police. Like, what's going on? Um, <laughs> uh, excuse me. <clears throat> now, when it comes to being an artist and painting, because you said you also design these pants. Yes. Uh, are are there any parts of this where you painted, or are these all sewn um? On? So these are all sewn on. Uh-huh. Only thing I would say is this loyal uh-huh. is from one of my close friends. That's like my brother. Uh-huh. It's from his clothing line, Loyal Seven. Okay. So that's from a clothing line. Some of them are just random shirts, like from Zara and yeah. like Rolling Stone shirts. Uh-huh. Um, this one is from a clothing line. Trust in me. Um. But this skull right here yeah. is from one of my shirts of my old clothing line called uh, I Love Money Collection. Mm-hmm. So that would be the only uniqueness to these pair. Yeah. There's no paintings, but some of the patches actually come from personal clothing lines that mm-hmm. I know. I got a um, sewing machine that I will give away to any pupil that you do have. Because okay. I have bought one. I was trying to get into like just creating my own pieces. I was like, yeah, I don't feel like that'd be this dope. Shit. And I would say, if that was to happen, I would actually have that available for whoever books my um, sewing class. Okay. After this episode, because mm-hmm. I do have a sewing class that I'm trying to put out there to help people learn how to sew in the way that I learn. Because mm-hmm. people, I feel like you learn in your own way. Like anybody can teach you, but you learn in your own way mm-hmm. all the time. So I feel like the way that I do it is will kind of be easier for some people to. Maneuver, yeah. so I do have a sewing class, and yeah, I could make that a part of whoever books after this, after watching this podcast, whoever books that sewing class, it will because it it's a one on one class, but you have to bring your own sewing machine. Mm-hmm. So I could say that will actually be included. All right, that'd be dope. Uh, you go give it to them, or you just gonna let them use it? Um, I will probably just let them use it. Yeah, because you, I think you should probably let them use it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, you can have it. I'm gonna uh, package it up, and give it to you. After okay, you that's today. dope. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, uh, now I love pants. Like mm-hmm. pants is my thing. I love cargos. That's probably my favorite. And then I had got into stack jeans. I love so, stack. That's what I started doing first. Stack uh-huh, stack jeans. Stack stack stack. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. that's all I was doing for your street. Mm-hmm. Stack jog and stack jeans. Then when the flare look came out, I said, "Oh, every pair of jeans I make got to be flared." Yeah. I feel flare like that's my. Of, like, well, stack reminds me of flare, but just yeah, cooler. without the rough, without the little rip, ripple part. Mm-hmm. So that's basically like I had a, a difficult customer said she wanted some stack jeans, then complained about the bottom being almost like bell bottoms, and I'm like, do you not know what stack jeans yeah. are? Like most stack jeans at the bottom are wide leg. Yeah, like they only be tight up in this area, but mm-hmm. once you get to the bottom, like your stack, your uh. Like those flare joggers, they're yeah. wide at the bottom. So yeah. when she said it, I'm just like, okay. I mean, Whatever. a lot of people don't actually do research. They just see something cute and cool or something. And the say, ins- inspo pic she sent me was a stack jean with a flare bottom. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I don't know what, what she got disconnected, but I'm yeah. th- that was one of them customers that I said, even after I do your work, you can have your money back. Mm-hmm. I don't, you're not finna deal with you. Yeah. And she had requested her money back. But I was going to get her the full thing, but she only requested, like, 
half of Partial. it. And I'm like, oh, well, you just made it better. You would have got the full thing had you not been like, because I'm not one of them people like, oh, well, it's done. You paid. Mm-hmm. I ain't got, no, I'm going to, because at the end of the day, I'm trying to keep you from getting on Facebook and doing the most. Mm-hmm. And that people in our generation have that bad. Not that I care because anybody can vouch. Whatever you say on Facebook, it's probably not what happened. Mm-hmm. And people can vouch that. But to even keep from going to that extent, I always put the customer first. I don't know about that one, Corey. I think you're giving them too much power. Well, to a certain extent. Yeah. To a certain extent. And I, partial, she could at least got partial back. So I had a person that I used to print clothes for people. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was printing 20 hoodies for this little girl. And I created her design that goes on it because she didn't have the original design file. So I recreated it and then printed it. And uh, when she saw a picture of them, I already did eight of them. I already printed eight. And she was like, this is too narrow. This is not as bulky, like as bold, the letters on the back, aren't as bold as I thought they were going to be. And I said, well, basically, you didn't have the design files. And so me recreating them, this is what it printed out to be. So if you would have had the design files, it would have printed out accurately how you would have wanted it to be then. Right. And so she thought that, you know, okay, well, you know, just redo them and redo that, redo anything you have done already, and, you know, just do it that way then. I said, well, no, you get the eight, and then I'll redo, I'll do it more bulky like you want it to be for the rest of them because those are already done. Right. So your time and your effort um, into doing something matters, and that Time is all that we don't. Yeah, we need. don't. Get That's that not back. for free. We don't yeah. get that back. And so I don't think you should have gave her the hundred percent. Even though you did it, I don't think you should have gave her the whole hundred percent because you spent the time and effort. It is her fault for not doing the proper research before exactly. coming to service you. That's why I said to a certain extent. But I feel like you irritate me in any type of way. Take your money and go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. But don't let me see you wearing the outfit either. <laughs> yeah. But she didn't know me, yeah. so I, I don't even know if she wore them. So uh-huh. I, I genuinely didn't care in that moment because she was just being very difficult. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wanted to get a little bit into mental health because one thing we do on Club Culture is promote mental wellness. And in order to promote it, we got to talk about our experiences so we you are currently on season five season five is the theme season is in five. real life in, in real, real life, life. so Be i want to get into real. your life Corey. get real with you okay. what's a hard truth that you felt like you had to swallow or just something that you found out that you feel like you had to like reflect on and really uh dig deep into yourself because it just wasn't feeling right to you if I want to be completely honest, mm-hmm. I will say I have been in those situations recently. Mm-hmm. However, I would say it's a situation that I told myself to not speak on because mm-hmm. I have healed from that and I have moved forward from that. But the way it played out, it's just something I can no longer speak on, if that makes sense. I feel you. I feel you. So I understand the question. I wish, I would say, I wish I could get into detail about yeah, that situation. Yeah. But personally, that's, you know how you how people say it's a chapter of their life that. They closed. Yeah. That's a chapter of my life that is closed. I don't want to say anything negative about it. Mm-hmm. So I'm just not going to speak on it. Mm-hmm. So that, that probably be the only thing, like. I don't know. I'm just to let you keep asking questions. Yeah, but I don't want to sit here and be like, oh, well, I can't answer that because it refers to that. Because everything don't refer to that mm-hmm. closed chapter. But with that, it was something that I really had to fight through to get me to be able to sit right here and speak yeah. highly of myself and my business. Yeah. It was a moment in my life where I didn't give a fuck about yeah. the business. Mental, like I would sit in my bed all day in the ball. And like now that I'm out of that, mm-hmm. I'm no longer going to speak on that. I don't. I don't feel no ill will towards yeah. that situation or that person. Yeah, it's just a chapter in my life that came, went, went a life lesson learned, and that's just that. Yeah, I, I wanted to. I want to also speak about like just how we all view negativity. So like, if I was speaking about you to somebody else, and I was to say, "Yeah, I love what he does." Uh, with ditto pieces, but when it comes to polyester pieces, I think that he's still got a lot to learn. If I was to go say that to somebody, would you deem that to be negative? 
or positive? I would deem that as um, definitely not negative, depending mm-hmm. on how you de- deliver the mm-hmm. message, what, if it's positive or not. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't automatically think negative because mm-hmm. maybe everybody, first off, have their own opinion. Yeah. You're entitled to your opinion. Yeah. Maybe I do need to work better on polyester. I was back, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't like velour material. Mm-hmm. Hate it. <laughs> You want anything made with that? I'll make it, but you about ain't gonna like it. Yeah, I didn't like doing it the I don't whole like that, time. That material at all. That material is so difficult to yeah. to work with. I love it if it's already made, mm-hmm. but for me to make it, yeah, no. Okay. But so I wouldn't take that as negative. I would take that as constructive criticism. There you go. And I am a person where I feel like you have the if you're spending money with me, you have the right to tell me exactly. What is on your mind when it came come to the piece mm-hmm. that you have bought, or mm-hmm. even with people just knowing about me, knowing stuff, or see the things that they, you know, they may not like. Yeah, I would love if they came to me. Yeah, but even if they delivered that to another person, it's just like okay, that's just their opinion. Yeah, it's still getting sold. Mm-hmm. Like I'm still making money from it, so I don't. I try not to take the negative things and run with them because you learn new things every day. Maybe it is something when it comes to polyester mm-hmm. that I need to know. If mm-hmm. you feel like that's something, either you or that person tell me so I can begin that research mm-hmm. to make it better. It seems like a lot of stuff is always hate to people. Yeah. If it ain't something that you agree with, all you hate on. I hate that so bad. Yeah. Because this is my opinion. I just don't agree with it. Yeah. And it's probably like, even speaking on that, that's just like the whole Nikki era thing. Mm-hmm. I love Nikki. Mm-hmm. Her barbs, I hate them. Mm-hmm. It's like, you can't have no opinion if it's not on her side. And it's like, she's not always right. And that's okay. Yeah. You, you're not finna get into with me because I said, I don't like one song. Yeah. Now I'm a hater. Yeah. Bitch. I mean, not <laughs> <laughs> do your thing, do your thing. Bitch, but I just don't like the song. Like I'm not saying she a weak ass artist, but yeah. I just don't like the song. But them people, that group of people. Mm-hmm. <sighs> You've had some run ins with the barbs in your time. People that I know personally have unfriended me. <laughs> Have yeah. wanted to get in two with me. Yeah. Over a bitch that ain't going to help them off that ground when I put you down there. Mm-hmm. And that be my thing. Like, you doing all this crazy talk. That lady don't know you, don't yeah. care about you. The extent you're going, your ass going to be on the ground. The way you <laughs> keep, like, just, she ain't going to help you up. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So, that's one situation I would say, like, yeah, people take everything as to be hate. Yeah. And it's not that. I w- it's not even just people take everything to be hate because it's a lot of things that people take as racist mm-hmm. or racism mm-hmm. that sometimes isn't that. Mm-hmm. And it's just like you just have to be like-minded and have an open mind. And this is where the looking from both point of views You got an uh, example in mind of what people need to be racist, but you don't think it is racism? Um. Oh, well, a recent one would be the uh, Miley Cyrus being deemed a legend on Disney Channel mm-hmm. over Raven. Mm-hmm. Of course, there's a lot of people taking that as being racist. Mm-hmm. I just, me personally, however they feel about that, it's their opinion. But mm-hmm. me personally, I feel like they both did amazing things with yeah. Disney. Yeah. But me looking at it from Disney's point of view, maybe they're just going off the numbers of the show mm-hmm. based on Disney alone. Mm-hmm. Hannah Montana was Disney alone. Mm-hmm. Raven, yeah, you had all these. You had your one show that did good. Yeah. But you had a lot of like, you had a lot of shows, but they weren't yours, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Like, you was just a character featured on those. Mm-hmm. And then even with like other stuff like Bill Cosby, that's not a part of Disney, I don't think. So, so I don't. did you not account for the Cheetah Girls? But even for Cheetah Girls, that it, Cheetah Girls, that's that's not a Ravens thing. So when I say not your own thing, like like she was a voice on Kim Possible. Yeah, they probably not looking at that because you were just a co star on Kim Possible as that voice. Or even with Cheetah Girls, it was you and three other girls. So they just can't give you that alone. Well, she and, is the star of Cheetah Girls, though. Yeah. So I just feel like with that is like even though she did more than uh Hannah Montana yeah Hannah Montana alone did all of the like did numbers internationally by itself where it may seem like okay maybe Raven had to put in more work to show that she can sit up there with Miley and she can but it's mm-hmm. like maybe they're just looking at it from Disney alone instead of your long record and mm-hmm. you do have a long record of great things mm-hmm. 
But a lot of those things is featuring different people. Well, Hannah Montana is just Miley Cyrus. Like mm-hmm. she got other people on there, but if if that makes sense. Yeah, I get I get what you're saying. Yeah, I don't uh, I don't think it's a race thing because they both were amazing. Yeah, but if they looking at the numbers, I believe Hannah Montana does come out on top. Yeah, Hannah Montana show uh, uh was uh statistically was more popular than uh Raven. Simone show. What's it, what is it called? Uh, that's, that's a Raven. Raven. That's yeah. a Raven. It was more popular statistically. Uh, I think that racism is de- definitely there, mm. just not like in your face. It's an undertone of it. Then Disney's not going to come out and say why we chose yeah. Miley over Raven for us to really be like validated or yeah, not make, validated. Yeah, basically. Yeah, so, so it's like you have to self validate that. Yeah. Whereas Raven is a legend. She's been a legend to the black community. Mm-hmm. Even some white folks. If people did their research on why that became a topic, it's because Disney does this award every year where they give that it's like walking into their Hall of Fame. So they give it to only one person every year. And so that year they chose Miley Cyrus. Yeah, which and is so it wrong? People was like, how did she get it before Raven? And I actually agree with them. How did she get it before Raven when Raven came before Hannah Montana? She did. Lizzie McGuire show came before Raven. Like, it was so many pioneers way before the Hannah Montana show. Right. I feel like that is where you can kind of see if there's a racist undertone to it. Why, do, why, why that went first? But then I see most people putting the emphasis on Raven. But like you just said, Lizzie McGuire came before Raven, I think. Yeah, but Raven's Simone show. Probably it, was more popular. I, it was way more popular. Because like, I think even even Stevens came before Raven. Yeah, it was way more popular than those. To- that, yeah. Both those shows. Raven's, when those shows came out, those was like the beginning of Disney Channel. Right. When her sh- show came, she like blew those shows out the water. Yeah. So this, and, and then Hannah Montana was after that generation of... Raven's shows and all the shows that came with Raven, it was Hannah Early Montana, Disney, Selena Hannah. Gomez, and all yeah. of those people. But Raven's show was really what created the this Disney, real yeah. big So in all reality, she really could have been got that yes. legendary status. Yeah. I don't feel like it should take away from Miley at all. Miley yeah, at all, it though. Yeah. Yeah. At all. Like, I love both both shows and yeah. both of all their work they did. Yes, yeah. both shows were great. You turn on this or Raven, I'm going to watch it. Mm-hmm. You turn on Hannah Montana, I'm gonna watch it. Mm-hmm. I go to, I would go to a Hannah Montana concert before I go to a Raven concert. I she, ain't, she ain't, she ain't really make music. I mean, well, I'm I going go to, to a Cheetah Girls before I go to Hannah Montana. I'm sorry. Okay, you got me. <laughs> I'm <there> sorry. <laughs> they the reason I want to go to Barcelona. Okay. So you got me there. <laughs> you sorry. I would definitely do that. <laughs> but when it comes to the individual, I would pick Miley Cyrus over Raven as far as going to a concert. Because uh, Party in the USA, this is my shit. She ain't got no music. Raven ain't got no music. Raven did make a lot of music. She wasn't making music for us. She was just making pop music. But it wasn't, like, when she started making music, she's older now. She ain't, she wasn't really making music as a teenager. It was the Cheetah Girls that was taking up a lot of the, her artistry. Yeah, but no, she does, she does have a lot of music without yeah. them, though. Yeah, she does. I'm saying, like, when Cheetah Girls came out, then that just That's, became the mainstream that, of everything, yeah, yeah. yeah. But even before them, like, she got music, too. Mm-hmm. She got a lot of songs where she could have her own concert. Mm-hmm. Now, will it sell out? Yeah. <laughs> not like a Hannah Montana or, you know, like that, but I'm not so, taking now, away. Now, maybe one Hannah Montana song. The best of both worlds. Like, who don't want the best of both <laughs> her worlds? Intro, her intro song. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah Montana ain't got no damn but, music. <laughs> but no. Miley Cyrus mean, got music. Same. This is the same person. Nah, Miley Cyrus ain't Disney Channel. Hannah Montana. Hannah Montana, Disney yeah. Channel. And that's why like, she Girls left. Is Disney Channel. That's why she left Disney, though, because they wouldn't yeah. address her as Miley Cyrus. It was uh-huh. only Hannah Montana. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, I get that. <laughs> well, I would go to a Miley Cyrus concert <laughs> yeah, I would, over I a Raven concert, but I would go to a Cheetah Girl concert over a Hannah Montana concert. Got you, got you, got you. Let's okay, okay. Uh, I'm glad we talked about that because that definitely was a hot topic. Yeah, uh, uh, what is your thoughts on stand culture? You spoke to the barbs. Oh, stand culture. Yeah. I genuinely hate stand culture mm-hmm. because when that started to get popular – it's like people went off what the fans were saying and doing to um, validate what the artist should do. Mm-hmm. So it would be basically like, stand culture will ruin something great. And, like, I don't get that. Mm-hmm. 
like they want everybody to be into it. Mm-hmm. If one person drops something, oh, he'll go the comparison to the next person. Mm-hmm. I, I don't like that. Has stand culture affected the way that you consume music? Have you ever felt yourself like see the narrative that's being online about online about certain artists, and then when it comes to those people dropping, you like, dang, I don't think I want to check that out. Or okay, I'm gonna check this out. It's is I, I I even if I spoke back on Nicki, like growing up, I love Nicki. I I miss Beam Me Up, Scotty. Uh, mixtape Nikki from when we were kids growing up, mm-hmm. but now it's just like her fans. I've found myself saying multiple times, like her friend, her fans alone will make you not like her. Mm-hmm. And it's like you shouldn't not like somebody because of the next person. Yeah, but it's in our reality, you have the ability to control your uh, fans, especially mm-hmm. her. And she does, and she just let them just do crazy stuff, mm-hmm. which a, a lot of celebrities probably do. But just to speak on that, and no, I don't want to get into it with no barb <laughs> because I like to fight yeah. and I fight good. But no, it's not even that deep. It's, it, for me, it's not that deep. Like I like our music. I like everybody. I love Nikki. Put emphasis on that. I'm just not a barb because they uh, get on this podcast to get the like they crazy. Hey. Stan culture is crazy. She's has she has sick people on people. Yeah. Hey. But I just can't even just say her because they have said that the beehive is crazy like that. But they go as far as they damn near get a bitch fired. I ain't so seen, what I've I heard. I see the beehive. I ain't seen them like that since Carrie Hilson though. I ain't really yeah. seen somebody yeah. really. And they, she still ain't recovered. <laughs> So sorry, man. She was she had some bops too, but yeah, like far so for stare culture, mm-hmm. I don't like it. Sometimes it's funny, some but like overall, yeah, it, it it's no need for me to be a part of it. I don't consider myself a part of anybody's stand culture. Mm-hmm. I want to go back to that question I had asked you about the hard truth that you had to swallow. Would you say that you were in a depressive state? Yeah. Okay. What are some things that you did for yourself to get yourself out of that state? So I feel like I've been in a depressive state so far twice in my adult life. Mm -hmm. Um, The first time around, instead of dealing with it, I ran from it as far as partying, going out, doing everything to distract myself. Mm -hmm. And like dealing with different people, messing with different people, that was the first time. The second time I felt like this was my chance to heal in a more perfect way, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. So I didn't use that time to go out or go party and, you know, do all the wild shit. This time I, to get over that depression, I sat with myself Mm -hmm. in my room and I see, you know how you sit in something and then eventually you get tired of feeling like this. So I had to let it leave my so I would say mm-hmm. on its own instead of forcing it. I feel you. I, I so understand what you're saying. I first first I sat in it. Like it was days where like I was telling you about my cousin, where we literally talk every day. Mm-hmm. So she is one of my best friends. Then I have another best friend. His name is Nate. It was like these are two people I legit if I don't talk to them every day, mm-hmm. it's a problem. We looking for each other. Mm-hmm. It was days where I would cut my phone off, go missing, and that'd be a problem for them because we understand you're going through something, but we talk every day. Mm-hmm. So, and it was something that I didn't do. Like, it was something I had picked up on from dealing with that that thing that put me in that um, depressive state where I just go missing and not cut my phone. Cut my phone off or leave it at home and just take a walk somewhere. Mm-hmm. So, most of the time, I just beat myself in my room. I cried a lot because I really believe crying helps. Mm-hmm. Um, because you eventually again get tired of crying, you get eventually yeah. eventually get tired of being depressed. Um, it also started to affect my work. I ended up not wanting to go to work, ended up losing the job. Mm-hmm. I just had to do things that like I love making clothes and I love like doing designs in that depressive mode. I wasn't doing it. Mm-hmm. So it was just like I at first the main thing is I had to sit through it. To get through it and deal with it. I like that. I had to sit through it to get through yeah, it. Yeah, because you just, if you keep hiding it or acting like it's, it didn't happen, eventually you're going to overwhelm yourself. with. Because at the end of the day, 
The day got to end, but who's ending that day with you? <laughs> Who's Shout out Glorilla. <laughs> but no, that's crazy because I've been saying me and my brothers been and my sister been saying that like for weeks before she even just did that interview. Yeah. So when she did it, I screen recorded the clip and sent it to our group chat. Like, mm-hmm. why is this bitch <laughs> saying that? I don't even think she finna she the one that started saying this. Well, yeah. I've been saying this for a few yeah. weeks. And I'm not one of the people that be like, oh well, now they doing this, so I ain't doing it. No, yeah. bitch, you funny, but I low key been saying this like how sexy be like ski. Yeah. We been doing yeah. saying that in Chicago. Yeah. Like this it was it was it's so funny that she said it mm-hmm. but like at the end of the day the day do got to end yeah but in those moments for me it was ending with me and the four walls of my apartment mm-hmm. and i just had to deal with it like i couldn't run from it i didn't want to run from it mm-hmm. i didn't want to like because the first time what i did i party drunk a lot party drunk a lot dealt with different people dealt with different people this time i didn't want to deal with different people i cannot Cause that first time it was like when I got over it, I still took baggage into the thing from the second time. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to do that. Uh, if it was to be a third time, right now I don't know. Um, but I know I just had to heal myself first correctly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to deal with nobody in that in those moments because I was not going to give you my all or off back. It was just oh, you're only here to fill a void, yeah. fill a void that I have. Yeah, I needed to learn how to. Do it, yeah. Do it on my own, or be okay with being alone on my mm-hmm. own. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. that's that was a big thing for me was learning how to be alone. Yeah, learning how to heal. Yeah, um, and it actually it it turned out nice. Like, and you would never think it was only a year ago. Yeah, it it doesn't look like it. Yeah, and it led me to writing a journal. Mm-hmm. I'm creating with well, this written up. Creating, I'm putting it on Amazon. The journal is called, because even to help me out that depression, I did a 21-day challenge where for 21 days, I just wrote and journaled everything I felt within that day. Mm -hmm. So I started a journal. I came up with the thought of creating a journal for others that's going through the same thing I went through. And the only way I learned about people, like everybody in the world go through the same thing. Yeah. And I found it out through TikTok. That's why I'm kind of upset they trying to ban TikTok. Yeah. Because TikTok was a part of that helping outlet to heal. Because mm-hmm. I, I could see people going through what I went through. They're posting the things that they mm-hmm. do to get over it. So TikTok was a part of my healing stage. Yeah. So, yeah, my journal is called 21 Days of Healing Millennials. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like our generation alone had to deal with so much. I feel like we were, in my opinion, we were forced to be adults, forced to get these jobs, forced to just try to fix the things that our parents kind of messed up. But Mm -hmm. as being an adult now, and I look back on it, I I don't want to say I had bad parents, but they were learning as they went. Like, because my mom had me at, 22 mm-hmm. i'm tw- about to be 29 i don't have kids yeah but i've i know a lot of people that did at that age and it's like seeing them it was like oh this is basically the same thing that my mom was going through she was learning as she went mm-hmm. so i feel like as millennials we were forced to start at early age like i've been working a job since i was 16 mm-hmm. so no way i should have been working at 16 paying all my own bills yes i'm not Blaming my mother for yeah. that, but it was just like something that I knew I had to do yes. to take the stress off of her. Of yes. I'm in, I'm a junior in high school. I know I got all these things coming up. I need to do something too because I wanted to play. I did was on a football team. I played one game, but I quit. Yeah, because this is securing the future. Yeah, which is okay, but, but I need right money now. now. Yeah, I need my own money right now. Yeah. I'm not finna keep waiting on my mom to pay my phone bill. Yeah, I want to pay my own. I want to take that stress off her. So yeah. Yeah. That's why I went that route. So I feel like I, I, everything I do now is dedicated to millennials because we need that healing as yeah. a whole. Yeah, I agree. I thoroughly agree with you. It's part of the reason why this podcast was created. Yeah, uh, it gives us an outlet to actually speak our truth because it's like we, we're in the middle. Mm-hmm. We're basically in the middle. We have went through everything up until this point. Mm-hmm. And we're still growing, but we had to be adults to go through those things. Mm -hmm. So that's what that journal was basically dedicated to, is helping someone through 21 days. Because, you know, it takes 21 days to break a habit. Mm. And I did that. So that journal was actually supposed to drop the end of uh, 
February. Yeah. But it's almost done, so it'll be dropped. It'll be on my website, on all my pages. Mm -hmm. My website is millennialriches.com. It'll be on there. I'm also going to be selling it on Amazon. Okay. So hopefully people that watch this podcast, you actually tune in to everything that we're doing so you can see these upcoming projects to possibly help. But yeah, so it's (laughs) called Millennial Riches because I feel like as millennials, all of us or most of us are entrepreneurs. Like we doing our own thing. We move to our own beat. Yeah, job is cool. I love the people that can work a job and be okay with a job. But me personally, I know I'm very talented. Yeah. I love, I don't mind working a job to fund the business. But yeah. the moment a job gives me a hard time, fuck y'all. I can live off my business. And I feel like that's what a lot of millennials' mindset is. Mm-hmm. We want to be that next group of people to start these long lasting businesses yeah. as far as Gucci, yeah. Prada, and all them. Like, yeah. even if we don't do it now, like, cause a lot of the people who are famous now for like fashion didn't become famous until they was well 40, 50 years old. Yeah. I just feel like we want to rush it based on social media yeah. and what we see every day. Yeah. But like, for me, it's like, I clap for everybody still mm-hmm. cause I know my time coming. It don't yeah. have to be now. It's okay. Yeah. I'm doing something I actually love to do, so I don't mind it taking longer. Most people start businesses for the money purposes, so mm-hmm. when they get bored, they stop. No, me personally, I love making clothes. Yeah, Someone is going to put me in that right room to where I can get a team to make my clothes. Mm-hmm. And I will be so appreciative of that because I know I started with just me. Yeah, yeah. So that's why a lot of things that I'm dropping for future references will have something to do with millennials because these are this is the group of people I grew up with mm-hmm. that I feel like can relate to me and I know for a fact we need to be healed mm-hmm. I know for a fact we are the generation that loves fashion mm-hmm. so many millennials are into themselves and fashion mm-hmm. alone so just with them two things alone I feel like they will do great and we need to fix yeah I'm, I am thoroughly with you uh I think that we are definitely going to get to that place that I call progressive culture where all the things that were once traditional will now be uh, unorthodox. Yeah, and that's that has already started. Like, the traditional things slowly but surely are fading away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, we could say all day we miss Granny Crib but how we used to get together. These kids don't get together like that no more. Mm-hmm. They damn so ain't outside like we used to be. Like, mm-hmm. we didn't care about no phones. You knew where your friends at was at if you seen a bunch of bikes in front of somebody's crib. Yeah. We was able to stay out till the street lights came on, as long as you was in front of the crib. Yeah. Like, they don't know. Pete, the, the generation under us don't know what it feels like to actually be outside. Yeah. They feel like they outside now, but yeah. we were really outside. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. For yeah. hours. You the, don't go in the house or you stand in the house so we yeah. outside. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I feel like millennials have went through a lot, endured mm-hmm. a lot, accomplished a lot. So everything I do from this point on will be relatable and directed towards millennials. Yeah. Even a generation under us. It's for everybody, but mm-hmm. I'm, I want to put on for my millennials. Yeah, because whatever we do for ourselves will affect them. So they'll get to feel the... The after the yeah. the outcome of what we're we're doing for our generation because I agree with you I think our generation needs a bunch of healing yes. I think that I'm the one that gives the harsh takes about parenting uh, older generation oh, history yeah. I'm, I'm the very one that gives. Big on it. <laughs> uh, I can't respect you if you don't respect me we gonna start the yeah and it's just like. Yeah. <laughs> That traditional shit is out the window. It's out the window, bro. And it's not a problem, but they will make it seem like like one thing that I'm big on with that you spoke on that is when people like honor thy father, honor thy mother. <laughs> mm, I, I I respect my parents. Yeah. But if you do some shit I don't like, I have I have that right as an adult to let you know. Ain't no oh well, you only get one mother. Mm-hmm. That's the saying that I don't like because yeah. Yes, I get one mother, but also understand she gets one. She don't get one son, but she get one son like Corey. Yeah, she get one Corey. The, exactly, if yeah. that makes sense. So it's like, it's a two-way street with me now. Like, yeah. And you also don't you flip the same coin. You don't also just get one mother. There's many people that would. There's so many people that uh, I could consider a mother. Yeah. Like I love my mama. I don't, yeah, like yeah, It's yeah. not to like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that's my girl. She cool now. Uh-huh. 
I know she's sliding whenever I need her to. However, with that saying alone, I don't go by that. And it took for me to explain why I don't go by that to my father for him to understand, like, okay, I get where you're coming from. Yeah. That's all I need you to do is just get where I'm coming from. Yeah. I understand what y'all grew up on, but yeah. you have to get, where, as an adult, you have to get where I'm coming yeah. from. You can't tell me I get one mother, but without saying she don't get one quarter. Yes, the same way. Uh, it's crazy because for the past week, we've had two clips go viral, and one of them was me just talking about my parents. Mm-hmm. And it started off, wow. <laughs> and I said, I have two incompetent, fucked up parents. And just went, went on from there, and it's just been going viral. So every conversation I've been having since then has just been about Parents is just because that's that's something millennials need to heal from. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> these motherfucking parents. Yes, some people got the cool parents, somebody got the neutral parent, but uh-huh. it's, it's just some parents that just, bitch, you should have just swallowed or or <laughs> spit out or something. Yeah, but I don't want to because I'm not gonna say I had the best parents. I had the parents that did what they could do, uh-huh. did what they needed to do, uh-huh. even if I feel like they didn't do enough. Uh-huh. Um, I don't want to just put the emphasis on my mom because my father had a lot to play in that. Yeah. Because he used to say things like, oh, your mom told you this. That's why you feel this way about me. Was no. your father uh, physically there? Yeah. Okay. He was there, but then he wasn't, but then he was. So that's why when people say, oh, personally, I never told nobody like this, but when people speak on not having fathers, I don't like speaking on that because I had my father. I knew exactly. We literally like... If he was to walk in his room, you would think I went over there. Mm-hmm. That's like how we look just alike. We literally look. I I was using his ID to get in the clubs. Mm-hmm. I have his entire whole name, so he was active when he felt like he wanted to be. Because mm-hmm. there was some times where I went weeks or months without seeing him or even talking to him. But that doesn't. I wouldn't deem that as making him inactive. Because mm-hmm. there's some people who can't tell you shit about their father. So. You- would you say you play the game of struggle Olympics? Because that's what that sounds like. Some people what, what, have had it worse than me. Some people have. Okay. A lot of people think that way. Some people have had it worse than me. I also yeah. had the in and out dad. Yeah. I decided to stop it and not even be in. At the A, at, uh, in third grade, it was, you know, the, you know, the stories when people say, you know, your daddy used to say he used to come to pick you up. You stand at the door waiting and he never come. Never come. That was me. <laughs> he was like that too. Sometimes he did. Sometimes that's what it like. Yeah. Sometimes I would say it would be based on however his relationship with my mom was at that point. Yes, exactly. Which was wrong, but it was very just like, wrong. That's just very how wrong. It yeah, it. y'all had kids and y'all didn't, y'all didn't wanted each other. Y'all didn't want these kids yet. Y'all wanted each other. Like, I wouldn't say we was mistakes, but yeah. if y'all into it now, we not saying we got to pick a side, but. You get to choose when and when you don't want to be there. Uh-huh. That kind of used to piss me off. But as I got older, I could say, like, well, he used to say, oh, your mama told you this about me. That's why y'all don't miss me. No, I actually see that you've been doing fucked up things. So yes. I took that opinion <laughs> on my own. Yes. But now that I see you trying to fix that, I'm going to give you that. Like, yeah, you yeah, really yeah. try. Like, because my father, I talk to him more than I talk to my mom. And it's mm-hmm. crazy because we used to be at each other's head. Yeah. No, actually, as a kid, I was a daddy's boy, like. You do something to me, I'm calling my daddy, or yeah. I'm going to call his mother, my grandma. Yeah. You do something to me, you got to hear from both of them. Yeah. As I became a young teenager, it was, okay, I'm riding for my mama because now I see for myself. Yeah. You really ain't doing shit like. Yeah. Not to take that from you back in those times. I don't know what you were going through. Mm-hmm. However, I just know now as an adult, I could say you, and we had this conversation, and he kind of admitted to it. He based it. How he felt about my mom at the moment is how he acted as a father. Mm-hmm. And that's just what it is. I just love the fact that he actually admitted that. He owned up to that. And owned up yeah. to it. Yeah. So now it's just like, that's my boy. He, yeah. He's like, that's my homie. Yeah. That's all That's all I feel like parents owe to their kids. Yeah, just own up to the to Wherever shit. you and drop like, the ball at, y'all can have a conversation about it. It just... Take some accountability. That's it. Yeah, that's just, that's, that's all, it. Just take like, accountability. I don't think I haven't had that conversation with my mom because mm-hmm. she ain't gonna do it. Mm-hmm. But I'm not gonna hold her hold that against her. That she's not gonna take accountability. Yeah. Or maybe she has, and I just didn't know that was her taking accountability. I'm yeah. not gonna hold that against her. Yeah. I just know how to operate with her. Yeah. I, um, so a lot I'm of us come from mothers that really did have 
children because of the man, yeah. not because they actually wanted to have children then. They just did and it because I, of the I man. really hate that for them because it probably was one of those, well, the man probably told her, I don't want this kid. Yeah. And uh, they, I feel like men have every right to say, mm-hmm. I'm not ready to be a father. Mm-hmm. Now, whatever you do with that information, if you decide to keep that kid, you can't hold that man at fault for not wanting to be there. I disagree. And I feel like he should, knowing that that's his kid. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, if he genuinely told you, I'm not ready to be a dad, yeah. y'all both knew what was gonna happen from fucking raw? Yeah, that's what. I, that's why I disagree with you. Yeah, so it's like yeah. you knew what could happen, so you, it's like yeah. yeah, you told her, but the kid is here. Like, yeah, just do your part. Whereas she also knew. Yeah, I don't. It's just it, like everybody should at this point in life. It's been so many movies, so many <laughs> situations. If you don't fuck with a condom, you having a kid. Uh huh. That's as simple as it is. Simple as that. I, I like. I was in a group the other day, and it was just, it was teaching us like about safe sex and all of that. And it's just like at this big age, if you don't know what to consider safe and non-safe sex, that's on you, dummy yeah. bitch. And that's exactly what I tweeted. Yeah, yeah. You's a dummy bitch because yeah. like it's too. It's in our face. Like yeah, too we much are past videos, removed. movies, yes. pictures. Like it's right there. Yes, it's common sense. Yes. Like, but at the same time, a lot of people don't even got common sense, so it's the world we live in. Yeah. Do you think that we are desensitized to the father not being in the household? Like, we're at a point where everything is about the mama. Like, if you was to be out with your homies and your homies was to do something crazy, you're like, boy, where your mama at? It ain't never like, boy, where your daddy at? Or your mama taught you that? Yeah. It's always it's on the It's always on the, the mom. Mother. For yeah. sure, it's definitely uh, But then you have some people where, because I know a lot of people where the father, there is a father with no mother. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just like you can say, some deadbeat fathers, it's some deadbeat mothers. Mm-hmm. And I, I feel like people hate that more than a deadbeat father. But it's just like, it's more common to have a deadbeat father than a mother. But when it's a deadbeat mother. Yeah, all that is cr- Like, yeah. how dare you do that to that child? Yeah, yeah. it's like, you the mama, like. You're the mother, bitch. <laughs> like <laughs> that's all I can really say is you're the mother. Yeah. So yeah, that's something that is traditional that I would want to break. Cause yeah, I got no a couple parents. homies that they they are the father, and I love that for them because they stepped up when the mother is shitty, mm-hmm. and I love that for them. However, who wants to sit and think like I got a deadbeat baby mama? Yeah, bitch, you the mama. We also don't tell them you should have chose better women. We don't. You say, oh, that's so sad. Let's help you out. Yeah, and it's just like, no, <laughs> look, you got to hear their story, too. Mm-hmm. Whereas if it's the woman, oh, well, you should have knew who you was fucking. Yeah. It's, I used to say that, too, but then I had to think, like, people change. Mm-hmm. You could have been so lovey-dovey before this baby. Now this baby here, now you just angry all the time. Mm-hmm. I don't get that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you go so deep into that conversation, like, you know what? I don't have kids, so yeah. I can't really speak too much on yeah, that. I love can. the mothers that's being mothers. Mm-hmm. I love the fathers that's being, being fathers. fathers. <laughs> However, I know I'm not ready for no kids, so mm-hmm. I'm not going to. Well, in my case, I ain't having no kids. <laughs> if you get where I'm going with that. Yeah. Well, I, I want kids. I do want kids. Mm-hmm. But my life right now, I can have safe sex. I mean, <laughs> protect the ain't no babies coming from what I'm doing. Yeah, ain't no babies coming out of that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, but I love everybody that's doing what they have to do as a parent. Yeah. Shout out to all of those people. Shout out to the mamas and daddies. For sure. And shout out to the people that step up for people that don't have yeah. those those figures in their lives. Too. Definitely, because that's been the trend lately. Uh-huh. Uh, step daddies. Stepdaddies or um, just mentors, coaches. Mentors, coaches, and all that. But people. lately, a lot of niggas have been going for the women with the kids. With the kids. And but, but stepping up for the kid that ain't there. It's mm-hmm. like, personally, I've seen it, and I love that. Even, like, far as mothers, but not that too many. Not mm-hmm. too many. You know, you, it's it's a conversation where most of it is emphasis, emphasized on the father, mm-hmm. and then most of it's emphasized on the mother. Mm-hmm. I, I have a soft spot for women. Women and, ki- and children. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think I think uh, I think there I think that a lot of change in the world to really get to that pro- progressive culture has to start with the man. 
Mm-hmm. And so if men don't start believing into mental health and wanting to promote mental wellness, or if men don't start wanting to stay in the households or even just live next door to the households, just being in that child's life, if men don't choose to want to do those things, then what we consistently have been seeing happen in history is going to continue to be there. Yeah. Uh, and that's because men don't really have that outlet to go over how they really feel and mm-hmm. speak on a mental. It's like they're, oh, you going through something, you'll be all right. And it's who, like, who do you think needs to create that space for them? Like only a man can create this space. Say that again. Say it to the camera. Yeah, say like yeah, men. Like I say all the time. Like I see women having network events. Men like it's it's grants for women with businesses. There's no grants for men. Uh-huh. Bitch, I got a whole business. Where's my men's grant? You got a uh-huh. women's grant. Uh-huh. I could say that's racist because how does she get a grant? But I can't. But we're doing the same thing. Uh-huh. But no, only a man can create that space for other men. Uh-huh. That is another reason why I'm doing the Healing Journal. Uh-huh. Um, in the future, I would love to be the person that create that space. I mm-hmm. feel like it may be spaces out there for men to come in and speak on their mental and how they really feel it. Mm-hmm. We just don't know about it. Mm-hmm. But me being an upcoming, being more active on social media and trying to get myself out there to network more, yeah. I feel like eventually, once I drop my journal and I see if that, like, I only want to say if, once I see how good that does, yeah, I will be open to creating a space where men can, like, I don't want to say podcast, but like a space where men can come in and we speak on how we really feeling and yeah. where our head is. Yeah, you're not going to catch that too many times where a person literally asking you, "What's going on with you?" Yeah, like I'm blessed to have people in my life that literally ask me, like, and it'd be a lot of my male friends. <laughs> And family that genuinely want to know mm-hmm. what's going on with me. Mm-hmm. And I love that because a lot of people don't have that. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I hate that. So I would love to create that space for them in the future. Yeah. Actually, I, no, I'm going to say I will be creating that space there you go. for men to there talk about mental health. One thing I have not done yet is get a therapist or do therapy sessions. Yeah. But for a reason, it's a reason I haven't done that. One, I can't do that with, I don't feel like a woman. Yeah. Would understand where I'm coming from as a man. Yeah. Not only that, it would have to be um, a man that is a part of the community, the gay community, because Mm -hmm. a straight man can be there and understand certain things, but a gay male, me being a gay male, he will be able to understand exactly where I'm coming from. Do you need him also to be black? Now that, I would say yeah. Because it's different. Like, everybody go through the same thing, all races, all colors. But I would love for it to be a black male because you will, it will hit home more, probably. Mm-hmm. Well, entering your journey to finding the right counselor for yourself, I want you to also know that you probably will have to start with somebody, stop with them, and find a different one until you get to that right person. Yeah. That's, it's like picking your next partner. You dated multiple before you find oh, that one you want to be exclusive to with. Point. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but that's definitely a part of the the, the journey. Like, damn, she yeah. wasn't working out. Trial and error. Yes, yes, yeah. Trial and tribulations. Now, whatever you got going on with uh, your brand uh, for the millennials, if you looking for a designer or anything, definitely hit me up because I always want to be attached to stuff like that. Okay. That's definitely a part of my walking brand is just anything progressive. So you're still into designer things? Yeah, yeah. I'm a designer for a cannabis company in Chicago right now. Okay, because I also have, I'm so, I'm throwing my first fashion show. Mm-hmm. It'll be June 29th. Graphic designer, though. Not fashion designer. Oh, fashion. I mean, that'd still be like, yeah. we, just, we could talk about graphics, like mm-hmm. for different flyers and things, yeah. get inputs on that. Yeah. But that'd be dope. And then I also, I'm actually in a group on Facebook, on Instagram, that's full of graphic designers, models, mm-hmm. uh, fashion designers. We just did a content event where we all came together, showed each other each other work, took pictures. With, there's photographers in there, nail techs, barbers, musicians. So if you want to be added to that group, I would definitely add it to mm-hmm. you. I was actually going to let them know to go watch the podcast today. Mm-hmm. So once I do that, I could add you to it so mm-hmm. you could be a part of that community because mm-hmm. that will be dope for you as far as the graphic designers mm-hmm. will. Because we have so many events that we do plan on having 
And I feel like you definitely, even just with your podcast, you can, you should yeah. be in that group. Yeah. So I'll definitely be adding you to yeah, that. Yeah, I ain't trying to get like a bunch of clients. I'm good on that. It's more so just like, I love marketing. Like I help, I love helping build a brand from the ground up and just pushing that brand to be more uh, I aware to other people. Everything that has to do with this podcast came from me. Even that little rug over there that got the slogan on there, I went to go make that damn you rug. You made it yourself, and yeah. I and I actually want to get me a rug made yeah. with my uh, logo on there. Yeah. But I thought I'm thinking about just going to I seen a turfing class. I think mm-hmm. that's what it's called, mm-hmm. and do it myself. Mm-hmm. But I do have people that I know do it, and I'm big on supporting people's businesses. Yeah. But at the same time, I just want to try. Just yeah, to see how it's, it's, it's if anything with art, I'm going to do it first. Yeah. Now, if I don't like it, yeah, I'm going to somebody because sometimes <laughs> I just don't like doing yeah. something. Yeah. But then I also like supporting, but then I get the mindset, well, you can really do that shit yourself. Mm-hmm. I'm, I did my website myself. I'm mm-hmm. not paying nobody to do nothing. I made my own business cards. Like yeah. I do ev- I do my own shirt. I do everything on my own because why go waste? I mean, it wouldn't even, I wouldn't even say waste the money, but mm-hmm. I'm good with whatever I put my mind to. Yeah. So. If you really know what you want, do it yourself. Don't go to somebody else because now you got to communicate that to them in a way for them to understand it and yeah. then bring it to life for you. I hate the clients that don't know what the hell they want. I hate them with a passion. Like, I like freestyles, but you have to give me somewhere something. to start. Yeah, some type something of creative direction. Like <laughs> something. Yeah. If I have to think about it on my own all the way. I charge you more for that. Yeah. Our crea- my, the creativity is hard to come by. It's so hard. It'd yeah. be so hard for me to make my own shit. So you think I'm finna sit here, yeah. do all this work for you and your outfit and get paid the mm-hmm. no. Yeah. You got to pay yeah. me more for that. That's too much thinking. Now we like to drop gems on the podcast. So I wanted to leave off this episode with you dropping us a gem. My gem. It's gonna be my business. My gem is if you I got a tip for on uh people that want to start businesses or people that's or if you have a business and you feel like it's not doing good, if you love that business, please don't stop. Continue to push your business. We're in the era where it's about content and networking. Mm-hmm. Yo, high school friends, is they're going to support you, but it's the strangers that's really pushing these businesses. Mm-hmm. So that's where networking comes into play. Because that's what I'm doing all this year. I want to do more podcasts. I want to do more networking. Mm -hmm. And that's what I feel like will get me more noticed in the fashion world. Mm -hmm. Coming out of that shell of not being shy and just speaking like how I was nervous first. But now as we continue to talk, I'm I'm being genuinely me because I'm comfortable. Yeah. So, yeah, they gotta get network. You, they got to get you comfortable. Yeah. Like, just network and get yeah. out of that shell. And your business will progress. It will Reach the highest. Yeah. If you believe in yourself and if you really love it. If you're doing it for the money, I'm sorry to tell you that. Yeah. Because all money ain't good money. Yeah. Hold those podcasts to a standard for yourself, though. If you want to do that, hold them to a standard. Make sure if you're being a guest on their podcast, they've asked some questions. They've did some type of something on you. Mm-hmm. You just not you just not just there just to be waiting. Yeah, because I really like how you actually put up these pictures. Because <laughs> I was really looking like I did not send her that picture, so mm-hmm. that shows me like you really get into the people mm-hmm. that you have coming on your podcast, which is amazing mm-hmm. because that helps you create the questions and the episode that you want to go about. Yeah, even if you already had your episode idea, you cannot have this conversation with somebody you don't know at all. I don't create. The idea before the guest. The guest creates the idea for me. Okay. Yeah. Which is perfect. Right, because with the little sign, uh, sign up, yeah, the form you do. Yeah. But it's, you still took the time to even go on my page, look for Because these probably are pictures you felt were my best work or that you felt stood out the most. And that's t- amazing to me because you took the time out to go yeah. look. Yeah. It can be very daunting to come on this podcast because we do get personal. Like, we do talk about... Stuff that could be traumatizing. Yeah, and it's a lot of things. People are scared to talk about that stuff. So I feel like I used to be, but now I'm I'm better at just expressing myself. I can yeah. only be me. It's only <laughs> you one me. You started off the episode talking about sexual assault, like yeah, and it was just like I wanted to say so bad, like uh, I don't want to sound mean, but I can't relate because at yeah. that age I probably would have let it happen. Mm-hmm. 
And, and that's fine because your experience is not like the yeah, other Yeah, that's next why person. I don't want to be in, insensitive to nobody's situation. I just know yeah. me. I yeah. can only speak for me. Yeah, yeah. Well, I knew exactly who I wanted to fucking date. So. <laughs> you know. I thoroughly appreciate you coming on the podcast. Thank you for having me. No problem. I definitely enjoy myself. I do see myself coming back in the future. It can happen. It can happen. So when you come on the pod for the first time, it's all about you. And if I ever give you a call back again to come back on, it's, it's about everybody. And when we all we all come together for an episode I did create before the guest. Mm-hmm. And we just dive through the topics. So you have the opportunity to still come back. You become now a reoccurring guest. So anytime right. I call you up, see if you're available, you, know, you want to shoot with us on a Sunday, that could be a possibility. Oh, yeah, that's dope. I'm down yeah. for that. Okay. Anytime. Well, that is episode 87 with 87. Corey. You got you got some some merch over there for so, us? So, yeah, so since I knew I was coming on the show, I made you all some shirts. This shirt design hasn't dropped yet. Uh-huh. So you all are the first, get the first with it. Okay. Um, this one, I believe, is yours. It's not black. That actual vinyl, when you take a picture, it becomes a rainbow. Okay, millennial riches. So it's millennial riches denim. Uh-huh. So this is one. This is actually my logo that I put on the pants as well. Okay. I don't have it on these jeans. Okay. But I actually cut this logo out, logo uh-huh. out of a jean, mm-hmm. then attach it to another jean. Oh, okay. So these are for y'all to keep. Thank uh, you, thank you. If you wanted to look at more merch, my website is millennialriches.com. Mm-hmm. My Instagram is millennialxriches. And my other Instagram is marley365 underscore. So be a, be sure to follow. I'll be dropping gems, tips on how to sew. Mm-hmm. I just, I've, I'm getting into dropping a lot of things, mm-hmm. really, on my main page, which is the marley365 underscore page. Mm-hmm. Um, however, I do have a fashion show coming up. So if you're a model, a designer, or any things of that nature that wants to come, be a part, you know, just sit through it, definitely follow me so you can get that information. I'll be dropping that information by next week because the fashion show will be June 29th. That's a Saturday. Okay. Make sure you send me the information for that. Yeah, I'm definitely sending it to you. All his ads websites and all that will be in the YouTube description. So if you're on your favorite stream platform, make sure you go over to the YouTube to get that. And he also has sewing classes that he is yes. starting up where he will have a sewing machine for people that want to practice with it. So make sure you sign up for that too. Yes, yes. If you're on YouTube, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell. And if you're on your favorite streaming platform, thank you for tuning in and make sure you leave us a rating. Peace. Peace. Just watch the damn podcast.